Hi everyone, it's Cherie from 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop and today I'm just gonna bring you a video to show you how to ombre a letter. It is a lot easier and less time consuming than using a pom-pom holder, which is also known as an alligator clip. Um, I did used to use this a lot more to go around each letter and in every nook and cranny, and it was taking a long time, which I don't mind, but I like the appearance of this a lot better. Especially when you have very skinny letters, this gives it just a prettier effect and more appealing than going around each letter individually. But we're going to work on just two hearts and then the word thanks, just so I can give you guys a couple different ways to do it. Waffle Flower does have these silicone mats. And these silicone mats, if you're new to scrapbooking or even ombre it will hold your piece in place so it doesn't shift or your card base if you're a card maker you can incorporate ombre into a lot of things scrapbooking journaling paper piecing coloring the list is endless so we're just gonna ombre the hearts just so i can show you guys using one color versus two colors and then we'll do the title i somehow touched blue um, when it came, it leaked inside the pack, and I guess it's still kind of leaking, and I touched it a little bit. So we're going to use a darker color. I was going to use pink, but we're going to change plans here. Now, if you're pretty comfortable, I do recommend that you use a glass mat, a piece of parchment paper, a styrofoam plate, a glass plate, a glass tile from the dollar store. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. One, it's going to save your product, and two, it's easier cleanup. Now, let's get started. These you can get online anywhere. I found Amazon is the best bang for your buck. Since we're trying not to waste product, we want to keep the cost down. These are reusable. You do just wash them with very mild detergent um, and warm water. They won't turn white when they're new, like when they're new. Uh, but it will fade. This one I used once, so there's a little bit of color, but uh, they do lighten up, and the color, once you wash them and you let them dry, it doesn't end up coming buried from deep inside and back into your piece. So if you don't order a bunch of them, one for each color, then I do recommend washing them regularly, and you just lay them, I just lay them on a washcloth on their side just to dry, and I put them on their side that way, the water doesn't settle inside here and cause any film or crusting. So I am going to use um, Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Oxide. You can use the regular Distress Ink or Memento. I get all my inks for the majority from 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop or online just out of convenience. Um, I don't dry very much anymore. And there's multiple reasons, but living in California driving isn't always fun. <clears throat> and I just picked two random colors just so I can show you guys. Um, Peacock Feathers is going to be one, and Mermaid Lagoon is going to be the other. And I already see where I'm leaking over here still. I thought I got it all out, but I didn't. They, <laughs> Tim Holtz really does fill his ink pads full, and that is a good thing. Um, I just need to take a Q-tip and go inside this one. It actually was like that on a few of them, and I love it because they don't come to you where they're dry needing to be replaced right away. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the first color. I'm going to do this one as a solid, and then this one will use two colors. I do blot my blending tool. That's all you have to search for on Amazon. Um, down on the glass or whatever I'm working on above, that way I'm going to keep dragging from this down into the bottom so the bottom is going to be the lightest. And if you wanted the bottom to be darker, you would just turn it upside down. It's super simple. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start going in circular motions. And I want the heavier part to be on the top, so I'm going heavier handed and I'm picking up as I go from the top down. We're going to just keep doing that until the whole paper is colored and we're going to start gradually pulling down. I do recommend if you're new 
to use the smooth cardstock, which comes in a pack of 25, I believe. You can get them in the multi-pack. You don't have to order them by single sheets on 12 by 12 cardstock shop. And that is a huge help. The smooth does work a lot easier. It goes by a lot smoother. I prefer textured just because I like textured cardstock. And now what you see I'm doing is I'm just circular motions now on the bottom and we're gonna go back over the top and keep dragging this color down further and still concentrating it where the main dark color is on the top. It's gonna be the same repetitive motion over and over until you get it to where you want it. But the more you go over it, the more the texture disappears into the color. And it's a slow transition, which I love. And this is it, guys. This is how simple it is. You can go lighter or darker. And if I wanted to keep the same color theme, I would, but this is actually what I do. So I'm gonna take a different brush head. This one's wider, and this is the Mermaid Lagoon. And now I'm gonna mix it in to my peacock feathers. That way it's more of the tail color. And the glass is why I, I do this, I love this. And now I'm just gonna go on the top and start bringing that one down. And this is how I get my ombre to go from the dark to light. And now we're gonna take this one that we used before on the peacock feathers and start at the middle and just pull it the rest of the way down again. And this is to soften your transition so it's not harsh, so there's no harsh lines. Scrapbooking for 20 years, I never thought that I would do what I do now, but that's all you have to do. Don't mind my dirty finger touching it, and that's because it leaked uh, and I touched it. That's, we'll go ahead and just smoothen that out. This is very forgivable, this method, because it doesn't dry right away, which is why I do recommend Tim Holtz and Memento for this process, because it's not a fast drying ink, it's buildable. Meaning once you let it dry, if you reapply, it's going to make the, the colors even more bold and vibrant. So if you don't like something, don't throw it away. Just go back over it again. And let's say this is too light. You can start with a whole different array of colors and darker. Uh, let's say you wanted it to be darker green or darker blue. You would just do the same process over the same piece. No waste. Or use the back of it. It's up to you. But this is how the piece looks. We'll let it dry and set it aside. And then what I do is I take my little blending brush and I try to pick up any excess. That way I'm cutting down the waste to minimal. We're gonna do the same thing in pink. I'll do it very quickly on the heart and then we'll move over to the title just because I wanna show you guys a little hack. Water gets this stuff off so easy. There's no scrubbing. There's no having to worry about smearing it onto other pages from it transferring because you didn't get it all. So just regular water. And you can actually distress these ones since these are distress oxide where it will make your pieces look like this by spraying water on it. So I'm not sure how to say this word. I don't know if it's kitsch or kits but it's the flamingo. K flamingo is what I call it. And picked raspberry. And we're gonna just go with two similar pinks now. Don't always trust the outside of the cover. This is mostly just letting you know that this is what it should look like on white paper. But if you do use it on a solid cardstock um, color, like I did use it here, just know it's not going to dry in that tone and it may take more than one layer. I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of that. Now, we're going to do this the same way. We're gonna start with the, the heavier hand on the top, pulling in the colors and working our way down. And this is just a simple technique, but <clears throat> it is a lot easier than going around each letter with a pom-pom and hoping that it looks good enough, especially on such a large piece like this. <clears throat> that there's not, oh, let's say I went around the edges with pink, that the white isn't overpowering with just a little rim of, you know, a pink 
outline border and that's why I haven't really seen that many ombre videos. I watched one or two and I decided to start playing with it. A lot of the ombre videos I see they will do multicolors which I'm all for um, but I don't always want to do purple, black, and blue for Halloween because that was one that I saw a lot of. And I wanted single colors for some of my pieces, so I just started playing. I do watch YouTube a lot and let things play in the background. And we did do the same method, and we mixed it together just to kind of tone it down some. And you can dip right into the lighter one with the darker. It does not stain your pads. I just... If I use Memento, I stamp my glass with it. That's the only thing I don't want to leave out and not tell you guys. I do go ahead and stamp my glass and start working um, from my glass with the same method pulling it in. So I'm not going to go all the way down with this one just because we've been in, in and out of that mixed pink. So I'm not going to, I'm going to go all the way down, but I'm not going to go pushing in rotation I'm just gonna brush it a little. Don't mind the blue on the corner, that's my finger. We'll go ahead and buff that out, but here's how the pink looks. And once again, we're just going to brush that little blue part out. And I said earlier, don't throw your pieces away. This stuff is not fast drying, so it disappears just like that. There's no more blue fingerprint on my pink heart. So we're gonna pick this up just with our little brush as much as we can it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm gonna show you guys one quick little trick slash hack and I will let you go I want to thank everybody for watching and joining us and following if you guys have ideas questions needs or wants put a comment down um, the design team admins are great. If it's meant for me, they will like tag me so I see it. Or they'll even message me, hey, you have somebody that has a question. Okay, no problem. So it doesn't get missed. Nobody gets missed. Um, I do have a couple things in the works for you guys and they're coming soon. I'm just going to have to edit the video and get it up so she can post it for me. So... If you do not want your letters going all over the place, what I do is I either use a scrap piece of paper and I would just tape it on the sides here because we all have scrap paper everywhere. I'm, if you scrapbook or craft with paper, you have scrap paper. And then I use that as my card basis sometimes because I love the way that the edges are actually ombre. But this is washi tape. I found this works great too because this mat is almost done. And this is where I swatched my colors. I do save some of these though so I can keep swatching. I don't throw the whole page out. But now I'm going to go ahead and ombre. And you're probably wondering how are you going to do that not being directly on the mat. Same thing. I'm going to put it on the mat. And I'm going to do circular motions. I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going from left to right instead of top to bottom. Because I'm going to transition from pink to blue just to show you guys. Let me move this over a little. It's a lot easier when you're not having to be in frame and you can turn it all cockeyed and get it, you know, where it's comfortable for you. But we'll manage. So same thing from left to right, right to left. We're doing the heavier on the top and we're lightening up the pressure we're applying on the brush going back and forth. Where now I'm just trying to fan it across to spread the colors. And what I'm going to do is reverse the way we, we did the pink. And this one here was the picked raspberry and I'm gonna use the peacock feathers for the other. Let me wipe this up so I don't end up dragging my hands into it. And now we're gonna dip right into the peacock feathers, dab some down, and same thing, left to right. I'm gonna pick up some more just because you can see as it fades the farther you go. Washi tape I love. 
it comes in handy because it does not tear your cardstock. Um, I do use it a lot and Hobby Lobby has tons of it and it's always cheap for a big pack of it. I always go to the clearance aisle because I'm not using washi tape for um, any of my customers' orders as far as where it needs to match something that I'm working on. I just use it basically to hold my corners down and my small pieces. I also have a magnet board. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and what you're learning. But I wanted to just show you guys how I do this. And I recommend you play with it. You know, you don't have to do it my way or you can go look at 20 different people on YouTube and play with it and figure out what works best for you. This is what works best for me. And <clears throat> I love ombre. Oh my goodness, do I love ombre. And the reason I did the light to dark is because I kind of wanted the purple effect in the middle. And what happens when you mix pink and blue, you get a really pretty purple. And this will just go on one of my customer orders. I just kind of throw it on the back of the cardstock that I put inside telling them thanks for their order but look how pretty this is guys and this is just two colors even though it looks like a lot more and you won't get this effect with a pom-pom and um an alligator clip now the washi tape all you do is you peel it off and you throw it out or wipe it down. Generally with pieces like this, I just take that same rag and I wipe it down and I reuse it and move it. And for me, I just hate wasting money, but you can wipe it down with a rag and there's nothing, well, that finger is already dirty. Let's pick this finger. So it's super easy to clean or you can put the washi tape on your glass and wipe it down that way. I'm going to pick up my excess and just wipe it down and let me hold a couple of these close for you guys. And that's it. Any questions, let us know. But look how pretty that the transitions to these colors are. I love them. We got pink. We got light pink, a darker purple, a deeper light purple. And then we got the light tail to the dark tail. But one of my customers that I'm melding my pieces to, I think will, you know, like the fact that they got some extra stuff in there and I like doing things like that for them. I do use a lot of die cuts as thank yous. And <clears throat> I use the Cosmic Shimmer Glue on the back because it'll hold it to whatever I'm working with where they can pop it off and then throw it on a card or in their scrapbook or whatever they wanna do with it or the trash, I don't know. But it does allow them to reuse it so you kinda don't have waste at all if they reuse them. But any questions, let us know. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, guys.